this morning um, right off with prayer, and we're going to have Nancy Ferrier come up. She wants to be anointed, and as we call, as she comes, let's gather around her as um, as she is. Pastor uh, Robert anoints her this morning. We're so glad. We're so happy that God is good. All the time. Look what He's done for Nancy this week. She was sick, and she's here. Didn't think you were going to be here, but that's okay. Father God, we gather around our sister this morning because we know that you answer prayer. Yes. That prayer has yes, already been answered. Yes. We see a testimony this morning, Father, of a saint returned to worship uh -huh. in your house. Uh -huh. Lord, we worship you in your in your home and in our homes and in the mm -hmm. car, but we are called to gather together as saints to share that mm -hmm. fellowship. Yes. I thank you, Father God, for the things that you work in our lives. Yes. I thank you, Lord, for Nancy yes. and her faith. Yes. I ask you, Lord, that you continue to bless and anoint her just to help Thank her to Lord. prosper, Lord, Thank and you. health and a sound yes. mind, emotional stability, yes. and a faith that grows every day. For we're never too old to have our faith grow. Right. And we Amen. thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul.
265 days and I'll be 101. <laughs>
When we, when we get saved, when we ask Jesus to come to our heart, he has sealed our hearts to live for him forever. To God be the glory. Amen.
is beyond imagination as he goes up and down this thing. He makes a tune. And he just knows what he's doing. Yes, yeah. he does. Just knows. Thank you, Charlie. Bless us. Praises and concerns. Aren't we thankful today? We're just so thankful. We got a lot. Marilyn. I, I am thankful that Nancy is scared. Yes. Yes. And I our family is traveling this week, so I ask God's traveling mercies for them, but he is so good to us. And I'm, I'm just so thankful how he answers prayer. Amen. Sharon, did you have your hand up? Oh. I did. Um, one was for Nancy, praise the Lord for her, and the other one was for Aunt Irene. Um, she's doing better, but she's not out of the woods. And she, they're preparing her to go to, I'm sorry, I got a tickle in my throat, um, Pleasant View. So that's kind of where we are with her right now, but we're all still there 24 hours sitting by her side and just praying the Lord's will be done, and she's accepting that also. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your prayers, everybody. Right. Please pray that this will be done in your body. That's right. Nancy. Yeah, I want to you pray for my son, John Crane. He's going to have knee surgery Tuesday, and he has blood clots in his legs from whatever. And uh, his back is giving problems now. So just pray that everything's going to work out for him on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. My husband is going in for a defibrillator Thursday at Mid Michigan Hospital. Pray for Walter and. Go ahead. Um, I don't usually announce our anniversary. Bill and I have been married 58 years on June 13th. Mm -hmm. And this <coughs> week, it's been a really rough week, but I went to see him yesterday and one of the older gentlemen in the <laughs> nursing home had plugged their air conditioning into a little tiny cord electric cord and they almost had a house fire up. Oh no. Oh, so I need her. Okay. Let's sing uh, happy anniversary to Diana and Bill. Happy anniversary to you.
have had requests made on their behalf for healing and guidance, for the requests on our hearts that were not made known today, but you know them, Lord. We thank you for those answered prayers. We thank you, Father God, for continuing to work in people's lives. I pray, Lord, that you will continue to move those in leadership and authority to draw the lost to repentance. We often think, Father God, what a better place it would be if we could remove certain individuals from certain positions and replace them with people that we think are best. But Lord, ultimately, let your will be done and help us to make our prayer that the lost be saved. For what better testimony can there be that one who walked in darkness now walks in light? We thank you, Father God, for the victory that we have through Jesus Christ on the cross through his shed blood. Let us not forget this, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our weekly Proverbs this morning is found in Proverbs 25, 19 to 22. Like a broken tooth or a lame foot is reliance on the unfaithful in a time of trouble. Like one who takes away a garment on a cold day, or like vinegar poured on a wound, is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. Walter, come and sing. Amanda and Walter are going to trade this week. And um, Walter's going to come and bring us a song. And then Pastor Robert will bring us the bread of life this morning. Yeah, we're already making a change. And Maria says, I'm going to be playing the organ, so we've been practicing with the organ. And I'm kind of, kind of glad she's got the piano. Uh, I, need to, I need to really hear this. And, uh, and uh, everything sounds different. Pianos, organs, so I need to hear the tune of this. Uh, I didn't know, I was asked earlier in the week if, if I would have a, could have a special on told my wife, yeah, I can have one. At that time, I didn't have any idea what I was, you know, I hadn't had anything going through my heart lately, particularly, a song particularly. Uh, but then I was going through a bunch of papers underneath my, on my computer disk. I piled up a bunch of music and some papers, and I was looking through that, and I come across this song that I had kind of practice wanted to sing for Easter. And that struck me. The Lord struck me with this song and said, this is, this is, this is what you need to sing. I'm going to do my best and I hope I can do the song justice. It's entitled, His Wonderful Look of Love. <coughs>
as fulfilled and not void. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, we it. Amen. So this week we're going to conclude our sermon series on abortion. What a, what a time. You know, I, I feel God has had this message uh, for a long time. Yes. It's not always uh, a place I have an opportunity to do an extended series on something, so this was a great time to do that. And I did not pick the topic based on the Supreme Court outcome because we've been on this now for three weeks. This is the fourth week. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. God is good. I feel it necessary because of the subject matter and how the devil likes to put things on us that the Lord has already lifted from us. To remind everybody that there is condemnation and there is conviction and that they are different. Condemnation, again, is from the devil. Yeah. It is a reminder and a pointing out of your sins and in your imperfections. It is a pointing out of your falling short to fulfill the glory of God and your unworthiness to be saved. But he puts on you hopelessness and despair, yep. a lack of, of joy, yep. and he tries to steal your future. Yep. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit brings conviction. The conviction of the Holy Spirit points out your sin, mm -hmm. shows your inadequacies, Shows how you are undeserving of God's mercy, but points out God's love. Draws you back through prayer and the reading of his word to the will of God. Secures your joy and your salvation. And gives you solid foundation. Yes. Sin has to be revealed. Yes, it does. But for the redeemed, it should lead to repentance. Amen. I want to start by looking at some of the reasons why our world says women have abortions or need to have abortions. And the end of this message is where we really need to hold on to and take that with us today. So as we cover the ugly, we're going to end on the beautiful, and that's where we have our task at hand. But we're also going to focus on what Christians should be doing. Now, the things we talk about today is not a complete list. It's not a complete list of, of the intricacies of why abortion exists or why people think it's a woman's choice. And it's not going to come even close to covering the obligations that we have as a church and as believers to those <laughs> who struggle with life's decisions. This following passage is taken from Christian Connections for International Health. And this is global statistics, according to the World Health Organization, say that 252 million women across the globe become pregnant each year. 252 million conceptions. 121 million of these pregnancies are unintended. Not all families begin as planned. 73.3 million women and girls have induced abortions. About 25 million of these are performed by someone without adequate training or they're done in unhygienic conditions. As a result of these, 47,000 women die each year. Another 7 million are admitted to hospitals with complications from failed abortions. And another 3 million suffer complications, but never receive follow-up care. Parenthood.com, and this is a pro-choice website, like Planned Parenthood, <coughs> Women's Reproductive Health. They sound good, don't they? They sound like they would be pushing for family, but they're not. They're, they're the sheep's clothing concealing the wolf. It gives nine reasons for why women have abortions. And these, according to them, are solid reasons that should justify a pro-choice outlook. The number one reason, and, and they say justification, 
as having a baby would interfere with your life plans. Oh. Oh, my. They don't feel ready, so number two, for the responsibility of parenting. There's a way to avoid becoming pregnant. Yeah. There's yes. a way to avoid becoming a parent. Now, we do understand that not all pregnancies are the result of willful interaction. Horrible things happen in this world. But they're not using that as the number two reason. Number three is they feel they don't have a solid support system to raise a child. There are a lot of single parents lacking a solid support system. They struggle and they need to be supported and admired for the hardships that they endure and for the task that they've undertaken and their willingness to dedicate their lives to their children. Number four is their birth control fails. So don't blame me for getting pregnant. I was on birth control. I was taking precautions, but the birth control failed. So what choice do I have? Because one of the top three probably applied and, and I'm, I'm going to have to get an abortion. I'm not speaking on the pros or cons of birth control. That's a whole, whole other thing. A lot of things in life fail. Creating or bringing about another sin never undoes the first sin. They simply don't want a kid. It's number five. Simply don't want it. Like it's a, a gift that you got that you're going to take back to the store. They don't have the financial means to raise a child. I often hear this excuse when people are living together and won't get married. Well, as soon as we have enough money, as soon as circumstances are right, well, if you're waiting for life to work out and not have any problems, <laughs> yeah. Number seven, and we're, we're down the list quite a ways now, is that they were sexually assaulted. A horrible, undoable offense to where we probably need stricter punishments. But again, murder is a sin. It yes, never it undoes the first sin. It's proven to bring substantial grief and depression down the road for women who have done this. Yes. I'm not a woman. I'm not going to pretend I understand what women go through in life. No more than a woman can understand what it is to be a man. But I understand that God is a creator of life and he's created all life in his image. Yes. Yes. Number eight is the pregnancy jeopardizes the parent's health. There's a lot of talk right now that by not being able to get a pregnancy or, or an abortion that the pregnancy is going to kill women all over the nation. As if they're just going to start all of a sudden dying for not having access to abortions. I, I double checked our Michigan law, which right now, uh, this law which was brought about in 1931 that outlaws abortion in Michigan has temporarily been put on stay because a judge who our governor found, deemed that it wasn't lawful. So our next prayer needs to be that another judge in Michigan, an appellate judge, will overturn that and recognize that this was the people's will. But even these laws in Michigan and other states, they don't say that the pregnancy has to be at the cost of the woman's life. So if that is your argument, that if a woman can't have an abortion, that her life is going to be lost, there's a provision in that law for that. The last one is that the fetus won't survive or it will suffer life-threatening complications. There has been 
a lot of abortions done simply because the doctor says your child is going to be handicapped. Mm -hmm. I don't want an unhealthy child. Seven abortions. It seems to me that the last two are the ones that really, if I was going to try to defend abortion, would be at the top of my reasoning. But even their speech reveals their heart. The pregnancy jeopardizes the parent's health. Who gets pregnant? The woman. But nowadays, we can't say woman. we got to say birthing parent. <laughs> not, you're not going to hear that from here. <laughs> That's what they make you say. Only women, not birthing parents, only women have babies. As we covered two weeks ago when we were dealing with conception, they say, well, can you define what a woman is? No, I don't know what a woman is. I'm not a biologist. Well, through that, you're admitting that a biologist should know what a woman is, therefore a biologist should know what a baby is. 96% of biologists say that life begins at conception. A little bit of review. And then the last one, they use the term fetus and not child. If you distance yourself from your sin, it makes the sin a little more palatable. You're not aborting a child. It's just a fetus. It's just a lump. It's life created by God in His image. Roe versus Wade has finally been overturned after 49 years. Amen. That's a praiseworthy event. Yes. Yeah. It should remind us that prayer does get answered. Yes, it does. How may it not be today. But the Bible calls us to be consistent in our prayer, persistent in our prayer, and to pray unceasingly. Yes. So you should pray on a regular basis. How often should that be? For me, it's multiple times a day. Yeah. Persistent. Just because I don't see my prayer answered doesn't mean I quit praying. Mm -hmm. I've heard preachers say, you've prayed once, God knows what you want, you don't have to pray on that anymore. Mm -hmm. No. God knew what we wanted before we knew we had a need. He knew before we prayed the first time. If you use that logic, you would say, why should I pray at all? <laughs> we continue to make petition on new things and old things so that we are reminded when those prayers are answered that God has moved, that he has done something. I hope we see a day when abortions are illegal in this entire country. Some are going to say, well, that'll never happen. Well, those same people said that Roe versus Wade would never be overturned. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of talk on the left side news that Roe versus Wade's made all abortion illegal. No, it hasn't. It's unfortunately just moved it down to the states to decide. Mm -hmm. You're going to see states who are pro-abortion make some really crazy laws coming up very soon. Maryland and California both have laws on the books where they have changed the terminology dealing with abortion from prenatal to perinatal. Prenatal is, are things that they're dealing with up till birth. Perinatal includes 28 days after delivery. These laws include such things as there will be no investigation into the death of a child within the first 28 days. I tell that to people and they're like, no, that can't be. That's crazy. That doesn't make any sense. They would never do that. There was a time in our country when they thought they would never abort a baby, period. <laughs> Christians have to be vocal in what we believe and what the Word of God teaches. This has to be done in love. Not, not through getting in somebody's face, okay. not through violence, okay. not through any kind of destruction of property, but through love and patience. Yes, yes, that's right. Persistence. Mm -hmm. To me, when I look at that list of nine reasons, the first six, to me, seem like they're done kind of out of selfishness. Yeah, that's right. They're about serving the self, not serving... <clears throat> 
the whole. Mm -hmm. If you were to put a boyfriend or a husband in, in place of those things and, and a girlfriend or a wife on the other side of those things, and I said I didn't want to do these things for my wife because it was not part of my life plan, or it wasn't something that I thought was financially capable at the time, different, different things on there, it would be looked at a different way. As Christians, we must always remember that we are ambassadors to Christ. Yeah. For, for Christ. Ambassadors for Christ. This means that we must make the gospel our daily life and the spreading of the gospel our daily job. We must emulate Christ to the best of our ability in everything that we Amen. do and everything that we say. When we fail to do for people as Christ would have us do, we have to go back and apologize. We don't say to ourselves, mm, I'll do it better with the next person. For some people, you're the only experience they may have to God. If you do it wrong, go back, apologize genuinely, and try to share it the right way. Our job is to draw people to God, Amen. not drive them away. How we act in our own lives will determine the effect that our witness has. I want to emphasize to anybody who's hearing this that if you are pregnant now, to be pregnant is not sin of itself. To be with child is not a sin. But a lot of churches will treat it as it is. Now having sex out of marriage, that's a sin. But if the baby is a result of that, it is still a life created in the image of God. Yes, it is. Keeping that baby should be our goal. Yes. We as Christians should never look at abortion as an answer. Never. We should never encourage anyone to have an abortion. We need to encourage them to choose life. Yes. Amen. We need to rethink on things. My thought is, I don't want pregnancy to take the life of a mother at any point. But I don't think abortion is the only answer for that. There are ways that an unborn child can be removed from the woman. I think if we know for a fact that delivering that child or carrying the child past a certain point is likely to end the life of the mother, we have a responsibility to save the life of the mother. It doesn't negate our responsibility to save the life of the child. We should, if need be, in my opinion, I'm not a doctor, I'm speaking from what I think is logical, remove the baby, providing every life-saving effort that is known to us. And obviously, the earlier in the pregnancy it is, the more difficult it's going to be. Look for solutions that always point towards saving life. Yes. Women of every age need our support. Whether a woman has conceived a child intentionally in the bonds of marriage or outside of marriage, whether a result of willful action or not, we promote life. Mm -hmm. We have to support the woman in this hardship. Not just tell her what the Bible says, not just say to have an abortion is to murder a baby, but to give solutions to be there, to direct them to centers that provide women health, women's health care, but are focused on pro-life decisions. Because like we mentioned earlier, so many of these places 
Parenthood.com, Planned Parenthood. They have names that make you think they're about the good of the woman and the baby, but they're not. We cannot pass judgment. Think on that a second. Because, boy, we are apt to do so. If you see a woman who's pregnant and she's not married, still a woman who's a child of God. Yes. Maybe they haven't come to the yes. Lord yet. But it's an opportunity to witness. Yeah. And it's a testimony waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. We can't just say to somebody, regardless of their situation, I, I, I feel for you and I'm going to pray for you. And then leave it at that. Because prayer by itself without action, I think is less than half the job. As we prepare to close, I want to read from James chapter 2, verse 18. It says, But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. For a Christian, compassion is a must. It is not an option. To show compassion is not something we decide to do, it's something we have to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. You will never argue anyone into receiving Christ. Because to the unsaved, the way of God is foolishness. The Bible only makes sense once you have received the Lord. Yes, yes. We have to be the hands, the feet, the mouth, so that the word of the Lord is shared. Yes. If you're hearing that the responsibility is on us, then you're hearing right. We are the ones who know what the Lord says and expects. We have to be the one to share that. But share it compassionately and with love. Amen. Even though the word of God is often rejected by someone who embraces sins of the flesh, we must continue to lead them compassionately with truth and in love. I'm saying this multiple times because you need to own this. Not just hear it, but remember it and repeat it to yourself. It needs to be a first response. Not something you have to think about afterwards with your interaction that you do that. But when you have these interactions, the first response. Focus on the fact that every one of us were born with a sinful nature. Broken. Unacceptable by God but we were redeemed by the blood of Christ. Amen. Praise, Amen. The Praise the Lord. Our sin, no matter how small, is no different than the greatest sin when it comes from separating us and making us unworthy for salvation. Yep. But as God forgives little, God forgives much. Yes. And he hears the prayer of every repentant person. <coughs> and he will forgive your sin. And he will give you a hope and a future. For we are saved by grace alone. Yes, amen. By faith alone. Yes. And that faith must be in Christ alone. So go out into the world and be teachers of the word. Yes. Make disciples of all nations. Teaching them the ways of God. The word of and be an example. Because nobody believes a hypocrite. And they're going to find you out if you are. Apologize for your imperfections and mistakes. But don't give up. Nobody is beyond saving. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen.
something of a testimony this morning? <coughs> I do. Four of our six grandchildren could have been aborted. The three that we that have been adopted, the mom simply did not want them. And when Michelle got pregnant for Noah, she was 42, or going to be 42, and the doctor said, there's going to be complications. I suggest you abort this baby. She switched doctors. Yeah. And we have our precious Noah. We have our precious Bo, our precious Broderick, and our precious Danny. Because God protected them from Thank you. Thank you. And we are so thankful every day for God's work in those boys' lives. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. I would imagine each one of us know of something, someone, who has a story like that. God's will all the time. is for all babies to be loved. God's will is for us to be loved. A lot of adults are not loved like they wish they would have been or could have been or could be. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom 
Come.